Howdy everyone, it's Sam. I hope you're doing really well. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider liking the content and subscribing to the channel. And if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. Week one of the 2021-2022 Rugby League World Cup is done and dusted. And uh, my thoughts on week one was that it was overall positive. Um, a shame about some of the crowds there and some of the ticketing fiascos that was going down there towards the back end of it. But overall, really enjoyed it. Um, and now we move on to week two and here are my tips for what I think lies ahead uh, for week two of the 2021 Rugby League World Cup. Game number one of week two of the Rugby League World Cup kicks off Saturday morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time from Coventry, Society Building Arena in Coventry, Australia host Scotland and Australia, no surprises, are a dollar favourites. Scotland are $51 and if you ask me, this stadium looks like a PlayStation 1 console that looks like it's been broken to be flattened out. That's what it looks like. What an odd looking stadium. But let's get into the team lists that have been announced just for this game. I must stress that the rest of this tipping video comes with no other team list information other than this one, Australia versus Scotland. Uh, there are mass changes for Australia. So James Tedesco remains at fullback as captain. Josh Shadowcar and Campbell Graham will be the wingers. Campbell Graham will make his Kangaroos debut. Matthew Burton and Jack Whiten will be the centres. Matt Burton makes his debut. Munster and Nathan Cleary are the halves combination. Regan Campbell Gillard, Harry Grant and Patrick Carrigan are the front row. This, the back row is Angus Crichton, Liam Martin and Isaiah Yo. And the interchange bench is interesting. Ben Hunt, Lindsay Collins, Valentine Holmes and Jake Trebojevic and 18th and 19th men respectively, uh, Daly Cherry Evans and Jeremiah Nanai. Shifting over to the Scotland side of things now. Uh, and there are a couple of new inclusions, but the big one is that Ryan Brealy, who had number seven on his back, uh, and played fullback out of position, in my opinion, uh, last weekend in the loss to Italy. He is out. I don't know if it's whether he's been dropped or if it's an injury, um, but he is out of the squad that was named 40 minutes ago. And the two new faces are Davy Dixon and Dale Ferguson. Um, now, I don't know who would be taking that fullback position. Possibly it will be Davy Dixon. Maybe it could be Walmsley. But then again, I think Wormsley, in a side that lost 28 points to four, I thought winger Wormsley, Wormsley, I thought he was really solid for him. Um, I really enjoyed what I saw from that young man the other day. Um, uh, Scotland, though, however, overall uh, were disappointing. That's to take absolutely nothing away uh, from Italy. But boy, howdy, I thought the Bravehearts last weekend were... Very disappointing. Meanwhile, the Australian Kangaroos were caught on the back foot uh, inside the first four minutes, uh, leaking a try uh, to Fiji. But then um, Harry Grant basically came on the field and changed the game. But while Cameron Munster got the man of the match, I thought Harry Grant could have got it. Got it, or I thought Angus Crichton was just so hard, man. He was ultra, ultra hard to stop. Um, how do I think this uh, game plan will work with Valentine Holmes being on the bench? I think Cameron Munster, if he's going to play his second game in a row in this World Cup, I think he will be benched halfway through this game and Matt Burton will be shifted to the 5'8 position uh, where we'll definitely get an opportunity to see one of his famous towering bombs and therefore I think Valentine Holmes will slot into Matt Burton's uh, centre position, but I think this is going to be a massive win to Australia, something to the tune of uh, 40 points to four, maybe even bigger than that. Um, so brave hearts, steal yourselves because the kangaroos are coming for you this weekend. Game number two of week two is from Kingston Park in Newcastle. Fiji host Italy. Fiji are $1.15 favourites to Italy, $5.50. That, after what the performance Italy put up last weekend, is not bad value on Italy. Now, I think Fiji deservedly should be favourites, but $5.50 about Italy and the way they played last weekend, 
could be very, very good, man. Uh, Sunia Toruvert fullback for Fiji was a standout uh, for them last weekend. Api Corusel was unfortunately um, still a bit drunk from his grand final win, uh, so he wasn't playing to his potential. Uh, shifting over to Italy, though, they played some really good footy, man, expansive at times. I think while Scotland didn't throw the best of attack at them, I think their goal line defense was really good. Um, and I think the fullback, Luke Polselli, uh, was a standout. But I think overall, man, Nathan Brown, my goodness, the way that he finished his NRL season with, you know, not playing for about eight weeks and just eating raw meat. Boy, howdy, he came out and just killed Scotland single-handedly. I give Italy a massive chance in this game, man. I think this is one of the games of the weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. I might even give her a live stream as well. Um, I'm tempted to tip hit Italy at $5.50, but I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to go Fiji because I can't go past how, how much heart and how torrid at times they made Australia look. Um, it was slippery conditions last week as well, which didn't help Fiji's style of play. But the way that Fiji hung in there at times against Australia is to be commended. So I'm going to tip Fiji to win 1-13. to 13. I think this will actually be a really good game. Then we're off to University of Bolton Stadium, England versus France. England are a dollar one to France, $26 outsiders. And you could say that this is the blockbuster game of week two, uh, being that Toulouse and uh, Catalan's Dragons are the two French clubs in the Super League. Um, you could say that this is the biggest game of week two. Um, and I think France, of all the teams in the World Cup, besides maybe New Zealand, uh, are most well-versed in how England players, how the English would play this game. Uh, at $26, I think it's, I think that's a bit rude, but hey, value's value, right? Again, team lists aren't announced, but uh, Jack Wellsby was unknown to me, but he, uh, he, he presented himself to the entire planet last weekend uh, and went sensationally, sensational from Jack Wellsby. Same too with Dominic Young. They played so quick, man. England, like it, it maybe it's more of a, con a, a condemnation of Samoa and the way that they didn't defend, but England just played the ball so quickly. Um, great try assist from Jack Wellsby. George Williams had a banger of a contest as well. Um, and uh, Dominic Young too, um, absolutely enormous for them. And I think Callum Watkins as well should be um, should be recognised for his performance too. He he had a lot of tough carries and did some really classy things for England. Um, meanwhile, France took on Greece and you win 34 points to 12 and there should be absolutely no concerns or um, you shouldn't be disappointed. But I don't know, man, I just... It wasn't overly convincing from France, in my opinion. Um, maybe because they were always just chasing the ball because Greece were always kicking it in every single set of six. Um, so France were always running, man. And maybe that, that was a really good game plan from Greece. But I just think um, France, they, they just did what they had to do last weekend. There was nothing overly impressive. Um, the, 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 certainly the way that they moved the defensive line of Greece back was impressive. But um, yeah, I, I'm pretty comfortable in saying England will topple France. But I think France, I think that will make a good game of it um, for the first half. But I think England will have just a bit too much class, a bit too much firepower in the end. And I'm expecting a scoreline of maybe 28 points to 14 or something to that effect. Um, but in any event, England... Oh, 13 plus. The next game is from MKM Stadium in Hull. New Zealand are hosting Jamaica and the betting for New Zealand has been suspended because Jamaica are at $251 to win this game. Uh, so will New Zealand rest their players? For example, will Joey Manu be uh, named at fullback? He did, he did it all on his own last weekend. He was absolutely enormous for the Kiwis. Uh, so will maybe uh, Dallin Wateen Zelesniak be reverted to fullback? Will Jordan Rapiner play fullback in place of Joey Manu? Uh, if Jerome Hughes 
is available. Uh, I imagine he will uh, take over Kieran Foran in the halfback position. So this is an opportunity for coach Michael Maguire to um, tinker around with the side, rest the players that might need a rest. And Joey Manu, though, he was um, he missed the finals uh, or missed the final against South Sydney Rabbitohs um, in week one. And uh, yeah, so maybe he would be wanting to play more footy, get some more minutes underneath his belt. But against Jamaica, with all due respect, you probably do rest some key components um, to your team. Meanwhile, Jamaica, they took on Ireland and they were thereabouts for the first 20 minutes. Um, and then it just that the, the class of Ireland that I really underestimated uh, certainly shone through. Um, New Zealand will win this game no matter what team is fielded. Um, and that's, yeah, 13 plus victory to the Kiwis this weekend. And I'm not even kidding. I think this might be the game of the week. Lebanon are hosting Ireland from Lee Sports Village in Lee. Lebanon are $2.35 outsiders to Ireland $1.60. But unfortunately for the Cedars, Adam Dewey is going to be suspended for this game for dissent towards the referee, uh, which is a mighty crying shame. Uh, because I think at two dollars thirty-five, it'd be a lot closer than that if he was playing um, up against Ireland. This is going to be a great game of footy. Ireland, they just needed to do what they needed to do last weekend, but it was helped massively in part to Luke Keary, who absolutely was was drooling at the prospect of playing for Ireland for a couple of years. Finally, did it, and he absolutely starred for him. He was brilliant last week for Ireland. Uh, Harry Rushton also had a good fist of it too last weekend. Um, and for Lebanon Cedars, man, um, boy howdy, they can hold their heads up really, really high. Um, maybe it was a case of just ring rust for the New Zealand Kiwis, uh, leading us to why Lebanon got so close at times. They got so close towards um, pulling off a huge upset at times last weekend. Uh, Mitchell Moses needs to be at his best. It's Moses versus Kiri, basically, in this contest. And again, there is that young man uh, coming through the Bulldogs juniors uh, that will probably end up partnering him. I thought Jacob in the halves. I think Jacob Carraz, um was 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 decent last weekend um, against the Kiwis. But um, yeah, if, if Dewey he wasn't playing, I'd probably tip... If Dewey he was playing, I should say, I'd probably tip Lebanon. But in this instance, I think Ireland, um, the performance they put in, I think they might just be a little bit more well-oiled. But I think this is going to be a really, really cool game of footy, man. But Ireland to win this game in a beauty, 1-12. Then we're off to Eco Power Stadium in Doncaster. Samoa hosts Greece. And the line, the betting line for Samoa has been suspended because Greece are a hundred and one dollars, and um, Samoa they need to put an absolute thrashing on Greece, and I don't know if they're going to do it. Um, there are a couple of changes, unfortunately, that have been forced upon them. Samoa that they needed to make. Uh, Braden Hamlin Uwele is out. My selection would be. Putting in Oregon Kafusi uh, to swap over with Braden Hamlin Uwele. Uh, and Hamaso Tabuai Fido uh, still don't know if it was his foot or if it was ankle, but ha uh, Hammer's World Cup campaign is over. Uh, and for me, I'd throw in Matt Fengai um, out there on the wing in place of Hamaso Tabuai Fido. Um, and Anthony Milford was also suspended for a late shot um, on Sam Tompkins last week. Um, and you'd imagine that Chanel Harris DeVita will slot right in there at the halfback position as well. And for Greece, man, um, yeah, they were very kick happy. Lachlan Ilias was great for them. Um, Billy Magulius as well, man. Um, yeah, Greece weren't too bad last weekend, but they still lost 34 points to 12. Uh, Samoa need to rectify the wrongs of last weekend because, in my opinion, that was just about the darkest day in Samoa's rugby league history. It was embarrassing. It was awful. They got a fire up. I think they will. They'll win this one 13 plus, but 
it's it, we really we're really all going to be watching this with a magnifying glass upon Samoa uh, for sure, man. Because gee whiz, there's they hit rock bottom last week and there's nowhere else to go but up for them. So Samoa to win this one, thirteen plus. Totally Wicked Stadium hosts the next contest. Tonga are uh, hosting Wales, and because it's still relatively fresh, uh, there are no betting markets open yet. Uh, between these two sides, but I imagine that Tonga would have something similar to Australia versus Scotland, a dollar to maybe $51 about Wales. And Tonga um, were okay last uh, a couple of days ago against Papua New Guinea in easily the, the best game of week one. What an incredible victory from Tonga by Tonga. Um, but it wasn't... It wasn't convincing. It certainly wasn't convincing. There were times there where it was clear, it was evident that they were the worse of a team at times throughout that game. Um, and for Wales this morning, they were supremely unlucky uh, to go down against Wales. But then again, um, you could really see that the, that that side needs so much more time together as well. Um, they they certainly fought hard. They uh, their, their halfback that he tried his ass off, um, but just some of the polish on those last tackle kicks were left uh, wanting. Fullback for Wales, Caleb Aikens had the chance to uh, after a really nice play uh, polish it by throwing a cutout pass to his winger who was unmarked. If Wales score, we're probably going to end up with a draw um, at 18 points all this morning against the Cook Islands. But Caleb Aikens. It was just buggered. He couldn't get the ball, but he couldn't throw throw the pass um, in, in the way that he would have wanted because it came off the hand of a Cook Islands defender. And uh, yeah, it was unfortunate for uh, Wales to go down the way that they did because they were up 12 points to eight at halftime as well. So, um, but Wales, they, um, they were a bit better than what I think everybody was anticipating, even though they went down in the end. Uh, and again, just back on Tonga as well, um, I think they'll easily win this game. Jason Taumalolo uh, is out. They're going to be a lot better for the run. You'd imagine changes are going to be made as well. But special shout out to that young man, Isaiah Katoa, um, who didn't star, but he, he made his presence finally felt last weekend. So congratulations to him. And Moses Suli was an absolute wrecking ball last weekend. And so too was Keon Kalamatangi. He was outstanding. And uh, I know a puppy uh, from Papua New Guinea won the man of the match, but I thought Kalamatangi, oh man, he was wild, bro. Um, but I'm going to go uh, Tonga to win this one by 13+. plus. Final game of week two is from Halliwell Jones Stadium in Warrington. Papua New Guinea host the Cook Islands and the betting line is not open just yet since Cook Islands did play this morning. Uh, and I would imagine though that it would be similar to Fiji versus Italy. Papua New Guinea, I'd probably say would be $1.15 favourites to the Cook Islands, uh, $5.50 or thereabouts. Papua New Guinea, man... Uh, I don't think they were robbed. There are a lot of people online that are saying that they were robbed, but I just think they were simply unlucky. Uh, that try in the corner for Ty that wasn't uh, was certainly a 50-50. I'm still undecided on it, to be con kind of honest with you. Um, but Papua New Guinea, they, they were so brave. They were so, so tough and gallant in, uh, gallant in defeat. Um, and they would have won that game, in my opinion. Uh, if Xavier Coates had played that contest, and I'm not too sure if he'll back up how extreme uh, his injury was on game day, but if Coates plays, man, who bloody knows? Um, Kyle Labor and Lachlan Lamb, I think it took him a little bit too long to warm up into the game properly. Um, I think I, I think maybe for about 60 minutes, I, I, I saw what I saw against Fiji earlier on in the season, um, and I think they just took a little bit too long to warm up into the game, but they're going to be a lot better for the run. Uh, so too should the Cook Islands. Um, watching their performance this morning, uh, it, she was a pretty basic old game plan from the Cook Islands, wasn't it? Just one out stuff, and it didn't expe expend any energy on them. Uh, and I guess they conserved all of that towards the back end that helped them in their defense. But much like Wales, their defense in between the 220 meter lines 
just giving up way too many meters to Cook Island. Same with Wales, just way too easily. And I think where Cook Island's kind of won it is in the 30th minute mark of that game where Wales had um, a couple of repeats, uh, a repeat set of sixes um, on the goal line of Cook Islands, but they repelled them. Uh, and I think the interchange bench from the Cook Islands, Makahisi, Makatoa, Davy Muwali, Brad Takarangi, they all came on and just lifted the side. And they, they are all really good players in their own right as well. But I didn't see enough from the Cook Islands to suggest that they can get over Papua New Guinea, who are going to come out firing. And Cook Islands, uh, while I, I'm not praising them, I do think that they were um, eventually physical. It just... Yeah, if Cook Islands, they didn't start the game well at all. And if it wasn't for the interchange bench coming on and giving them some help, um, they they obviously would have lost. Uh, well, not obviously, but they would have lost, man. Um, so I think Papua New Guinea, if they can back up the physicality, the intensity of what they showed and displayed um, this, uh, this, this past weekend against Cook Islands, and if Cook Islands are, are still the same last uh, next weekend, where they're kind of a bit flaccid, um, I think Papua New Guinea can run right over the top of them. But I think this will still be a really cool game because there's enough talent in Cook Islands to do something. And they did win this morning. So I'm going to tip Papua New Guinea to win this one, 1-12. One and I'm pretty confident about Papua New Guinea win winning this one as well. Yo, that's it for me, guys. Thank you very much. Continue enjoying the Rugby League World Cup. Continue losing sleep as well. Um, expect some more live streams from me and Hold the Ball over the coming days as well. Um, yeah, getting really into the swing of things about this World Cup. I'm really, really enjoying it, and I hope you are too. Thank you, everybody, for the continual support. Hope your team wins this weekend, except for Scotland. I'll talk to you later. Adios.